Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, number of students unable to eat lunch. They give us a pretty long essay here to read. I always love these types of problems, but the problem is more simple than they make it out to be. So I'm gonna ignore a lot of the context of this problem. Let's say we have one array students. And so this is just the preference of every single student. So one student prefers one, another student prefers one, then the other two students prefer zero. And the order of this matters in theory, at least the way they describe it in this problem, but I think that's just to confuse you. So they tell us that this is the student at the beginning of the queue, like the beginning of the lunch line, and this is the student at the end of the lunch line. And they also tell us that we have a second array called sandwiches, and this is the order that the sandwiches have to be served. And so the preference, by the way, here is like the sandwich. So this is sandwich one or sandwich zero. Now, the sandwiches in this case are zero, one, zero, and one again. The order of this matters because we have to serve sandwich zero and then we have to serve sandwich one and then we have to do this one and then this one. So they ask us, well, first of all, the length of these two arrays is always gonna be equal. Now they ask us, how many students are we able to serve? And the rule, the way they describe it in the problem is this. If this student matches the preference of the first sandwich, then they can take it. If they don't match the preference, then we move this student to the end of the queue and then ask the same question for the next student. And this student also doesn't like it. So, okay, we move them to the end as well. Now we have this student who does like this sandwich. Great, we've served one sandwich. So we kind of repeat this process. Here we see that this student doesn't like this sandwich, so they go to the end, and then we would kind of repeat the process. Now doing this simulation might be possible, but it's kind of annoying. And the ultimate question that we're trying to answer here is how many sandwiches are gonna be left remaining, which is equivalent to saying how many students are not going to eat a sandwich, because remember the length of this is going to initially be the same as the length of this. So if we have two students who never ate a sandwich, then we'll probably have two sandwiches remaining. Now, in this example, this student will get this, this student will get this, this student will get this, and then this student will get this. So it works out. We have exactly zero sandwiches remaining. Zero students did not eat lunch. So what possible case would allow us to have some sandwiches left over or have some students who did not eat lunch? Well, let's change this example slightly. Let's say this is now going to be a one. Let's see what happens. Okay, this student gets this sandwich, great. This student gets this sandwich, great. This student gets this sandwich, that's also great. Now, this student has a preference of zero, but we don't have any zeros left over. There's a one here. So basically, the only time we're gonna have some sandwiches left over or some students left over is when there is a mismatch between them. So this has to happen for us to not serve sandwiches. Because notice, when they tell us in the context of this problem that a student will be then at the end of the queue. What they're essentially saying is that the order of the students doesn't really matter. We don't have to serve the students in this order. We can skip this student and then serve this one and then come back to this student later. So the order of this does not matter at all, but the order of the sandwiches does matter. They have to be served strictly in this order. So the order of this matters slightly more, but only to the point where we get to a sandwich and we just do not have any students that are willing to eat that sandwich. That's what matters here. So let me just show you a couple more examples to make this 100% clear, and then we're gonna go ahead and code this up. So I'm gonna change both of these to ones. So we have four students who want sandwiches of one. Now suppose this is the order of the sandwiches. I start with a zero here. None of the students are willing to eat that sandwich. Therefore, the result of this would be four. We have four sandwiches left over. We have four students who did not eat a sandwich. Now, suppose I change the order of these. Suppose I change it to this, one, 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 now zero. Now I have three students who got a sandwich and then we got to zero and nobody was willing to eat a zero or this student wasn't willing to eat a zero. So therefore we would return one. That's what I mean by the order of the sandwiches matters a little bit, but ultimately what matters about the sandwiches is the quantity of each of the sandwiches as well. The way I'm gonna solve this problem is by initially counting the students. I'm gonna create a hash map or just, we wouldn't really need a hash map, I'm just doing this for convenience. 
you could just have two variables, but basically I want to know how many students are going to eat the sandwich of type one. And initially we have four. How many students are going to eat the sandwich of type zero? Initially we have zero. With this count, we're going to go through every sandwich. We see, okay, we need a student of type one. We have a student of type one. So therefore we decrement the count to uh, three now and we eat this sandwich. We do that for every single one of these sandwiches until the count, I guess, of this is going to be down to one. And then we get to zero and we see nobody is willing to eat a zero because the count of zero is equal to zero. Nobody is willing to eat that. So this is how we can solve this problem pretty efficiently. We can do it in a single pass. That's going to be big O of N. And we do have to count the occurrences of each value here, which is also O of N, at least time. The space complexity, even though we have a hash map, is going to be constant because notice how we only have two keys for the hash map. We're going to count the number of ones and we're going to count the number of zeros. So now I'm going to go ahead and code it up. So I'm going to initialize the result to either the length of sandwiches or the length of students. Doesn't really matter. And we're going to assume that these are the students remaining. These are the students so far that have not eaten lunch. And then eventually we're going to decrement it and then we're going to return that result. So now for how we're going to do this. First things first, I want to count the occurrences of the students, what their preferences are. We could do that manually. We could do that like this for S in students for every single student and then create a hash map up above. Let's call it count and then increment for every single key in this hash map. An easier way to do that in Python is uh, basically, let me just write out the code. Like first we'll check uh, if S is in count. And if it is, then we'll just, well, I guess first we could check if S is not in count and then we will insert it. So we'll map that student to a count of zero. And then here we would do something like this, just incrementing it by one each time. An easier way to do this in Python is to use something called a counter, which is basically going to do exactly what I just showed you. So passing in the students array, it will count the occurrences of every single integer in this array, put it into a hash map. Now that we have that, we're going to go through every sandwich and we do have to go through this in order. We do have to go through from left to right. So for every sandwich in sandwiches, let's check if the count of this sandwich. So for this sandwich, we're saying, do we have any students willing to eat that sandwich? Is the count greater than zero? If it is, then we just fed that student. And if we're doing that, let's decrement the result by one and let's decrement the count of that by one because maybe we had four students initially willing to eat this sandwich. Now we only have three. So that's why we're decrementing this by one. Now, if this is not true. What does that mean? That means we don't have any students willing to eat this sandwich. Therefore, we have to terminate. We have to return our result immediately. So this is the entire code. Let's go ahead and run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, it does. It's pretty efficient. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.